to have the gentleman who is coming to join us right now via Skype, Tom Fitton, the president of Judicial Watch. Tom, we welcome you back to America's Forum. And uh, as we bring you along here, the, the obvious question for you, and I know you've watched some of these hearings, and you often talk about limits to congressional oversight, but is there one question that just should have been asked that they have not gotten to yet in these hearings? Well, I think the core group of questions is the gap, the gap between when they knew and when they told Congress. You know, and when you look at how they actually told Congress, uh, they were very circumspect. They attached emails that suggested there was a problem, but they didn't tell Congress outright there were hosts of emails that had been lost. And it's that refusal to tell Congress in a timely way about the loss of evidence, I think that raises all sorts of legal questions, both criminal and civil, about the obstruction of the congressional investigation and the failure to provide information to a subpoena uh, that um, that puts people like uh, the IRS commissioner and other officials who knew about this uh, document destruction and loss at risk legally. Well, speaking of that, we have the testimony of IRS Commissioner John Koskinen as he went before these congressional committees, tried to lay out a timeline and tried to say that everybody at the IRS was really doing their dead level best. Let, let's take a listen to that testimony directly. The IRS Information Technology Division had tried using multiple processes at Ms. Lerner's request to recover the information stored on her computer's hard drive. A series of emails available after all of Ms. Lerner's email was loaded this spring recounts the sequence of events in 2011. A frontline manager in IT reported to Ms. Lerner in an email on July 20th, 2011, and I quote, I checked with the technician and he still has your drive. He wanted to exhaust all avenues to recover the data before sending it to the hard drive cemetery. Unfortunately, after receiving assistance from several highly skilled technicians, including HP experts, he still cannot recover the data, unquote. Ms. Lerner was told by email on August 1st, 2011, as a last resort, we sent your hard drive to CIs, the IRS Criminal Investigation Division, forensic lab to attempt data recovery, unquote. In an email already read on August 5th, 2011, Ms. Lerner was advised, quote, unfortunately, the news is not good. The sectors on the hard drive were bad, which made your data unrecoverable. I am very sorry. Everybody involved tried their best. So, Tom, is there any evidence that this hard drive was actually destroyed three years ago? Because if there's any proof that they were destroyed more recently, then wouldn't there be at least obstruction of justice charges? And how about the chance that in the final analysis at long last, a special prosecutor will be appointed in this case? Well, you know, he's laying out a narrative that hasn't been challenged yet. There's been no independent investigation other than the IRS telling Congress uh, how it is they were able to uh, not produce documents responsive to a subpoena. Remember, that destruction of the hard drive, that collapse of her system, occurred 10 days after Congress made a key inquiry about IRS political targeting. 10 days later, the documents disappear. That's something they should have told Congress about immediately. So if indeed it was an innocent mistake or just a, uh, a coincidental computer error, they could have taken steps to try to protect information and evidence, uh, go to other agencies where these emails may have resided, go to backup tapes immediately, but they didn't do that. That shows you the contempt they had from Congress from the beginning of this process. So unless you have an independent criminal inquiry with the second part of your question, we're not going to get answers to this. And I don't trust the Justice Department to appoint a special counsel. There's no way Eric Holder wants to do this. Uh, he is as politicized an attorney general as anyone we've ever seen in that office. I mean, anyone, in term, certainly in terms of recent history. So right now, Congress is in the position of fulminating about what went on and having to rely on, on the attorney general of the United States to do his job, which he has shown no indication he's willing to do. The good news is at least 26 Democrats already voted to vo to criminally investigate or to appoint a special counsel to criminally investigate uh, this president's uh, IRS and the IRS scandal generally. So uh, 26 Democrats is uh, certainly a strong bipartisan uh, sign that something needs to be done here. And uh, if Congress wants a special counsel appointed, they will get one. 
uh, but they got to be consistent and strong here. Maybe a select committee is one way to ratchet up the pressure again. You had dueling committees. You know, you talked about the video from last week and the video from this week, and the guy's going to talking about, uh, he's talking to two committees almost contemporaneously, and he was testifying yesterday how there have been six investigations. Maybe the solution is to have a Benghazi-type select committee into the IRS investigation. This has got to be ratcheted up. This is a serious scandal, and Congress doing its usual complaining about documents it's not getting doesn't really get the public anywhere unless you've got a grand jury going or a significant congressional investigation above and beyond what typically is done. Well, Tom, John Bachman here, and I wanted to ask you, that sets me up for my next question. It seems as if you look at yesterday's hearing with Daryl Issa and the one that took place earlier where he got into it with the ranking member of that committee, uh, Elijah yeah. Cummings, it seems as though you could make the case that he may have lost a little bit of control of the committee hearings because it devolves into this back and forth where you have the Democrats in the House Oversight Committee advocating on behalf of Koskinen and the IRS and Lois Lerner, et cetera, and then the Republicans trying to get to the bottom of this, but they're being thwarted by uh, the defense, if you will, in, in this case here. Do you think, in, in lieu of a special select committee, that we're really going to look have to look to the House Ways and Means Committee to get answers on this? Yeah, I, I, look, that's going to happen in Ways and Means Committee, too. And that's what happens in congressional investigations of, of, of an administration. You've got the one party controlling one branch and doing the investigation. Uh, the party of the, par of the president in power provides defense. Uh, that's just politics. And uh, there's got to be a leadership commitment to kind of getting a pushing that aside and really getting to the truth. You know, about these IRS emails, guys, I'm convinced we wouldn't have known about it if I could tout our own horn, but for Judicial Watch's FOIA lawsuit, because they, quote, discovered this back in February of this year. Guess when they started producing documents and began searching for and really getting into document production for our Judicial Watch Freedom of Information Act lawsuit? February of this year. I fear that Congress wouldn't even have known about this, but for an independent investigation. Congress has shown itself time and time again unable to get the truth from this administration, and it's been treated uh, like children by this administration. That's why you need independent investigations like Judicial Watches and, frankly, a special counsel, and you need to have a different approach from Congress in terms of its own investigations, because I don't know what else, what hmm. more information you need to know especially given this latest game that Congress is being, um, uh, this latest game that uh, Obama is treating or co uh, engaging with, with co uh, Congress, I don't know what else you need in terms to, to understand that whatever is happening in Congress in terms of oversight of the Obama administration isn't working. Well, Tom, you mentioned a promising side, despite the frustrations with what is transpiring with the committee theatrics, you mentioned the fact that at least in terms of floor action, when it came to a vote, 26 Democrats voted with the Republicans to, to move forward with the investigation. But yes, uh, committees, in addition to oversight, engage in posturing and politics. And you have a situation where Elijah Cummings of Maryland, the Democrat, the top ranking committee on uh, uh, the top ranking member of the Government Reform and Oversight Committee, uh, last night gets into this substantial defense of John Koshin. And let, let's just take a listen of what he had to say about the I IRS commissioner in trying to defend his, quote, honor. Mr. Koshin testified last Friday before the Ways and Means Committee. And now that we have the facts, they tell a vastly different story. Truth. Whole truth nothing but the truth. Our committee has obtained no evidence to support Chairman Issa's claim that Lois Lerner intentionally destroyed her emails. To the contrary, we have now obtained contemporaneous evidence from 2011 showing the exact opposite. Now, you have a situation with Elijah Cummings. He's already the subject of a House ethics investigation on some corroboration with the IRS in terms of questioning some of these groups. Uh, about 30 seconds, uh, are people going to be taking a closer look at Elijah Cummings in addition to what we're seeing with the uh, House Ethics Committee? The, the comprehensive criminal investigation that I'm talking about ought to include uh, Senate Democrats and House Democrats who are pressuring improperly and collaborating with the IRS 
to target the presidents and their own political enemies. And we'll have to leave it right there. Tom Fitton, we thank you for your time.